Greetings. <coughs> Size then, how did man ever, ever, and I mean ever, created God? Before we continue to prove it through this evidence, I'd like to point out a subject here. God does not listen to sin and crime. This gives you a hint to understand that he only listens to holiness and only performs holiness and perfect things. His people, the Christian faith today, can testify to the truth that when they pray, he listens and does what we ask him to do. Thus, we are his creator. Otherwise, he will not listen to us. If he listens to anybody and anything, and not to his creator, then he will obviously listen to everybody, including evil. Therefore, since he does not listen to evil, but listens to the agreement of the New Testament, that we have become his sons and daughters, then obviously the truth is that we created him, as the evidence will now be seen in writings. How did man ever create God? Equals the Ten Commandments says he finished his work on the sixth day and on the seventh rested. Now the following I know because I travel in time and space and when I do I die each night to get from A to B throughout the whole cosmos in time and space. To get from A to B you have to die when you when it's done by the power of God and be reborn elsewhere. When you return, you die from there and get reborn at the place that you will be for, for example, in the spiritual realms. Okay, I'll get into that in some other time or anyway. While the Emmanuel called Jesus Christ, the Son of God in other words, God with us made it clear, saying, My Father who is equal, that is my Father, which is interpreted, I mean, God Almighty, or Jehovah, if you like, always works equal. So when he finished one part of the creation as written in one of the Ten Commandments, okay, he began elsewhere. It's the only common answer and the only logical answer. Since the command say he finished on the sixth day, and Jesus actually says, he, my father always worketh. So what God is saying is, yes, he did finish his work on the sixth day at that place that he finished. But then Jesus says, my father always worketh. So he's saying that he always works, meaning that he finished his work in one day, rested, then began his work elsewhere. Many will say he left this place when it was finished and went elsewhere to work. Yes, true, pinpoint. It was, in actual fact, the Bible records that he puts Jesus Christ in charge. He is the creator of life. Why would he put his son in charge of the kingdom to those that believe him if he still, if he at that time was here? He was not here. He had to put someone in charge. He had left for work. His occupation is the creator. That's his occupation, the creator of life. Therefore, he left to do more work and put Jesus in charge of the kingdom, who is very much like him, God holy himself. Otherwise, he would not put him in charge. He would still rule the cosmos as God himself. Yet he left for work and put Jesus in charge. Scripture says that everywhere. Proof of evidence by the letter of the word in the Holy Bible itself. But people called out his name, way back, even in the Old Testament, to this day they call his name, way back in the Old Testament, for help. Now, for God to leave here and return, or vice versa, whatever, in other words, to travel from one place to another, he has to die and be reborn. So our prayers for help and to unite with him killed him from the place that he was, in other words, and eventually, our own prayers, like the New Testament, like in the New Testament, our prayers to unite with God, again, so on, through the power of the Holy Spirit, true Spirit, in other words, in the old prophets, in the Old Testament, for example, was a few of them here and there had the Holy Spirit, Not, it wasn't as common as today, but there were a few that did, that would pray by the power of the Holy True Spirit and gave him birth again, 
he is now known in the New Testament that he's born there by the virgin birth, okay, as a human being in the New Testament gospel, as Emmanuel translated um, Jesus Christ, God holy, human being, creator of life, evidence of the word. Therefore, what he basically means is that Jesus did come as a human being and was raised to life. So he was God and becomes human being, and then he's raised to life and sits at the right-hand side of God. It is written that we will become God, as in big G, big O, big D, because we go to the resurrection of life too. Jesus clearly states, clearly in Bible Scripture says, unless we become perfect, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He says, none are perfect but God alone. Therefore, proof of evidence by the word that we have to become God, as in big G, big O, big D, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. We must not be small G, small, uh, small D, in a way that going over our heads and over God, and um, above God, in other words, in any kind of evil way, of proudness or whatever, and... Uh, you know, um, rebelling against God the Creator. In other words, we become the sons and daughters of God, if you like, the exact likeness of Jesus Christ, back to the image of God. If man was created in the image of God, then it's commonly known and understood that God is in man's image, since man is in God's image. Hello. So is then, through the Holy Bible, God now says, just because the, he, he created all ways does not mean we are instructed that is by God that created Jesus holy, Jesus Christ holy that is, to follow them. He does not say that. We are instructed by Emmanuel, translated Jesus Christ and repeat, holy, perfect of the New Testament Gospel Bible, to abandon every other way and follow only after his way, truth, life, whatever, okay, light, whatever, that is, that is God's way, it's not the world's kind of this, this type of stuff is in good, love, whatever, but God's type of love, God's ways, which is anything we do, whether any job, or hobby, so on, like sports or whatever, so on, we do it in, by, through, with. Like fellowship, for example, Emmanuel. In God's type of love is what I mean when I write love, that's why it's in capital letters, so you can understand that. God's type of love, not the world's type. The world type is different. God would still give us life if the world's type of love gave life, but it doesn't. The only type of love that gives life is God's love. I will not tell you that the word love is wrong, but I'm telling you it doesn't give life. Only God's love does. Okay? If he did, he will approve of it. But since he doesn't, and he's the creator of life, and wants to give you life, he does not approve of the world's love. Otherwise, he will kill you. He will want you to be dead. He, wants, he approves of his type of love, because this is what gives you life. Not for his sake. He will die for you, but for our sake that we might inherit eternal life. He says, love one another as he, that is Jesus Christ, named Emmanuel Holy, had loved us. This is the original scripts. Even from the very beginning of time. Today's scripts may be watered down and not write all that, but that's what the original scripts actually say up to the King James Version of the Bible. So as then, the space mission, we do it in, by, through, with Emmanuel, in his kind of love, faith, hope, that type of stuff of his kind, so on. Not the world's type. It's different the world's type. If we don't know how to do that, that's fine. We seek for ways and we accomplish it. Remember, he's with us. He's in you when you're a Christian. You can do all things in Christ Jesus who strengthens you and me. He will get you through. With man, this is impossible to become big G, big O, big D. But, but God's help? Huh? It's as easy as. We will get a pass.